Chapter 8. Land of Peace. Meeting with Mayor Jefferson each day expanded Dark Sparrow's knowledge of the supernatural. She learned that wizards, warlocks, witches, and shaman gain their magic from dead spirits, just like the Genelan ancestors who were hanged in the 1800s. Such is not a case around spirits or parallel dimensions, rather it applies to planet-to-planet -to -planet relations. Trinity was an illegal immigrant, not a US citizen. All who lived double lives originated from Nankin City then partially immigrated to Albac. Mayor Jefferson explained how Dark Sparrow's ultraviolet light would detect where magical prescience had been or currently was, but he said it would not work on Albac because of its slight environmental differences. The Banshee has psionic powers, which is why blue remains were seen throughout Apartment 2001. The man who killed Eric Fitzgerald had a very small amount of residue showing, compared to the cyborg, which left a frightening amount of slime all around the country club. One theory Dark Sparrow had was that more sorcerers were around Nankin City casting spells, which was a direct cause of the slime overflow. She knew only three sorcerers, Cameron, Trevor, and Jane. Today, for the first time, she was scheduled to meet Jane's father, Maxwell, who was a sorcerer, lawyer, and entrepreneur. Dark Sparrow had shined her ultraviolet torch on Mayor Jefferson and his freak mother but found no trace of slime or what is explained as mana nodes throughout their skin. She thought, how does he know so much if not for the Turner family's loyalty to him? Is Mayor Jefferson the reason why Jane is famous? Mayor Jefferson is a true US patriot whom I have personally helped to be re-elected each year, keeping scum off the streets. Inside Warehouse 6 at 6 o'clock, Dark Sparrow was three floors underground, sitting away from the six men. She mused, perhaps the cyborg or the man who killed Fitzgerald is sitting in here right now. Are you a friend of Jane Turner? Troy extended his reach, offering Dark Sparrow a handshake. We are best friends. In fact, we are super duper friends. Dark Sparrow purposely stuttered and crossed her arms while tilting her head, staring at Troy cross-eyed. Troy sat down next to Dr. Axel Chase and Maxwell Turner, observing three other men in the room, Cameron and Trevor Banks from the occult shop and a man wearing blinding white tennis clothes. Troy whispered to Dr. Chase, I have not seen those three men before. And that lesbian with short black hair has a nasty attitude. Who invited her? Dark Sparrow had read a great deal in the last week and was confident that she was up to scratch regarding what to expect. She thought, strange how I am expecting Jane Turner to reveal her true self to me. After reading my books from the library and Trevor's two books, I now have a better understanding of what to expect. I must keep a close eye on Cameron and Trevor Banks while I find out more information about the mystic trinity. Surrounded by old broken grey brick pillars, Dark Sparrow thought the building looked like it might fall at any moment. From behind two separate pillars, Jane Turner and Trinity stepped out, introducing themselves. Everyone knows I'm Jane Turner the famous bounty hunter, and this here is Trinity from Albac. She has no surname because it's not tradition to have a surname if you're born on this planet. As everyone knows, a strange attack happened one week ago. Keeping this on the quiet, we all need to piece our evidence together to take out the cyborg, whoever he or she is. Jane nodded, forcing herself to frown. Maxwell Turner stood up, speaking in a distinct British accent that stole Dark Sparrow's breath. Here tonight we have from Earth Dark Sparrow, Troy Marino, and Dr. Axel Chase. Unfortunately, Dr. Tracy Genelan and Major Brett Thorne cannot join us today. Dr. Genelan is sleeping after having worked many night shifts, and Major Thorne is following his own leads. A once-in-a-lifetime offer has been made to travel to planet Albac. By the law of the land in the Sarina gem fields, only a few are selected to travel to planet Albac every year if no convictions are recorded. All of you here have been chosen because you have shown outstanding dedication to your community. Any questions so far about the selection? With his British accent, elegant way of speaking, and pearly white teeth, Dark Sparrow imagined herself pressed against Maxwell's chest. Maxwell Turner looks handsome for a middle-aged man. Dark Sparrow Turner, that name works for me. 
His appearance reminds me of a hero of a realistic romance novel about love between two people significantly apart in age, unlike the other romance novels starring dimwit bodybuilder types who act as if they can wield a sword but somehow have no idea how babies are made. Trinity passed around scrolls showing five spots marked on two separate maps. She said, one spot is marked NEV. Then you'll find the Tyson River Bridges, the Golden Sun Country Club, Gwenvale Asylum, and this abandoned warehouse across the road from Dr. Axel Chase's home. Five spots are marked by color according to Gemstones, Amethyst University, Rubervale Prison, Nine Mile Sapphire Beach, Topaz Thieves Guild, and Emerald, the Land of Peace. Dark Sparrow thought, Mayor Jefferson mentioned that according to an inside source, there was a jailbreak at Rubervale Prison two weeks ago. Good job running your prison, Cameron. A more qualified warden should be in charge. Say, I could be the warden, because no one would mess with me. Anyone from Earth who is keen to explore a different world and share Albax customs in the Sarina gem fields, please raise your hand. We want you to help us help you do whatever is necessary to stop any further invasions. Major Thorne, Principal Childus, and Peter Richardson have started a petition suggesting that any available NEV be prepared to assist in evacuating Nankin City. Maxwell directed his wink toward Dark Sparrow. Why? Dark Sparrow interrupted Maxwell in mid-sentence. You mean we travel to another world to learn a new culture, and in the midst of this socializing, we find only one person who possess magical powers. And then we trust there will be a cover-up of this incident that someone from your world has caused. Who then gets recognition after the cover-up if no one else knows who the hero is? Jane handed Dark Sparrow a scroll. Our Queen and Judge Vedic Jones has requested you, Dark Sparrow, because of your law enforcement expertise. She has also asked for Troy Marino from NEV for his leadership and people coordination skills, Dr. Axel Chase for his engineering knowledge, and Dr. Tracy Genelan for her trustworthiness and psychological expertise. Jane pouted. You are interested in fame and gold. We only care about justice. Dark Sparrow, you will receive all of the fame as long as we all work together before the cyborg strikes again. Wait. I have not even seen the cyborg. The only person here who is is you, Troy, according to Janet Munson's blog. Internet patrons have increased, earning her over $12,000 per month just to talk crap. Turning to Dr. Chase, she said, at least you, Mr. Axel, are still in the lead, making over $15,000 per month. Dr. Chase growled silently under his breath, staring at Dark Sparrow. It's Dr. Axel Chase. Trinity handed Dark Sparrow a blurry photo of the cyborg casting a double gust spell. Who took this crappy photo? I have seen UFO pictures more believable than this. Aliens are real. They are called Cyangans. I took the photo. Allow me to introduce myself. Sir Leviticus Smith. I play tennis professionally at the country club. On Albach I am an anointed cleric knight and head of the divine department at Amethyst University. Troy tapped Maxwell's shoulder, whispering, He's played too many of your video games. Maxwell Turner stood up and approached the stage, I will drop by tomorrow morning for the weekly Thursday court routine on Albach. Hopefully I can participate in this morning's festivities before tonight's demonstrations. Dark Sparrow gazed into Maxwell's hazel eyes, noticing his brown curly hair and strong-jawed, manly chin. I will be coming. Jane, we need to work together for the greater good. So count me in, Dark Sparrow volunteered enthusiastically. Dr. Chase raised his hand. I volunteer Troy. Bro, you need a holiday. And what better place than on a foreign planet? Anna and I will look after David for a couple of days. It seemed to Troy like he had no choice. All right. I have a score to settle with the man in the cyborg armor. Troy punched his right fist into his left hand. Trinity spoke in tongues, casting a powerful spell that opened red a portal gyrating clockwise. Come now, all who are coming to planet Albach. Dark Sparrow thought, that is the same way Fitzgerald's murderer opened a red portal. 
since Fitzgerald is dead, if I want to make a shitload of money now, I guess this is my best option. What is on the side opposite the Selim Hotel? Jane Turner and Troy Marino stepped through the portal without hesitating. It's got to be now, Dark Sparrow, before the portal closes. Dark Sparrow moved her arm toward the gyrating black hole. Reaching forward, she felt a pleasant sensation, like touching a warm, soft bed. She suddenly found herself dragged through the black hole by its vacuum. Maxwell, Leviticus, Cameron, and Trevor stayed behind as Trinity jumped through. Dark Sparrow began feeling nauseous, seeing stars all around her, with everything becoming a blur. Once on the other side, she fell forward on her knees as she spewed black cola. Drinking too much cola? You remind me of Marcus. I mean an old friend, Jane muttered. Dizzy and unable to reply, Dark Sparrow spewed more cola. Troy held her against his side, helping her walk. The underground sanctum they were in was lit up by several torches with their bright, crackling flames. Troy pointed. What is that warm glowing green thing over there? It feels hotter than an oven in here. Jane answered, using hand gestures to explain, that is the underground base of the Emerald Mana Tower. Random side story, when a scion overuses their mental psionic power, it causes the blood vessels to burst in the brain. That's why in movies a scion's blood flows directly through the nasal passage. I know this because I am a nurse's assistant first, a bounty hunter second, and a lawyer third. Trinity is a low-class cleric, so her self-regeneration is not strong. However, her blood vessels heal, complementing her psionic powers. Trinity interrupted before Troy could ask another question. Jane and I can deposit any source of mana. We absorb it to replenish ourselves or even recharge our enchanted items. It's technically known as channeling. Maxwell Turner is the strongest converter of sorcery channeling to elemental magic. He can turn water to ice, stone to electricity, and fire to premium gasoline. Holding out her right hand, Trinity deposited red streams of mana into the Emerald Mana Tower. This is how we deposit and absorb mana. This prevents mana exhaustion, just like in your video games. Trinity leaned forward, depositing blue mana from her eyes. Then she ordered, we need to move to the surface to meet Master Desmond and Sensei Hope. Dark Sparrow coughed as she managed to stop her head from spinning. She thought, hum, a mystic with psionic powers. Maybe Trinity or another mystic is the mastermind behind Fitzgerald's murder. She pretended to trust my authority when we first encountered each other at the country club. Above ground there were bamboo huts, plantation fields, and different monstrous races of beings harvesting summer fruits. Trinity graciously announced, Welcome to Emerald, formerly known as the Land of Peace. An elderly yet muscular tanned man with silver hair and a sleeveless green G.I. approached. Trinity and Jane, you have made it back safely, he said, kissing Jane and Trinity's cheeks. Hello. My name is Desmond. My adopted teenage son, Hope, will be done with his class shortly. The group casually walked along the grounds, admiring the peaceful environment and seeing the point of the Emerald Mana Tower. Jane pointed while skipping. All of the Mana Towers are 100 feet tall and 60 feet in diameter. A class of students were performing carters, each with a bow staff. A young boy was teaching the class. He was wearing the same sleeveless green G.I. as Desmond. He had blonde spiky hair like Jane's. Dark Sparrow considered that maybe he was her younger brother. He looked to be over 21. With 17-inch biceps, he appeared too manly to be a teenager. Dark Sparrow had a sudden flashback of sparring with her younger brother. Ken would be about his age if he were still alive. Wait a second, I see from some of the literature I have been reading that many races here are training together, elves, dwarfs, winged men, even, I believe, a humanoid cobra folk and a cute fluffy rabbit folk, which I can barely see past the huge elephant folk. Now I have seen everything. Or maybe I haven't seen anything yet. Once the class bowed out, the young sensei embraced Jane in a warm hug. 
Jane, have you heard anything about my parents' whereabouts? Her face saddening, Jane replied, I have located your father. He is happily remarried to someone very nice and very caring. As for your mother, without a name, I am struggling to find her. Chin up, as your father would always say. Very soon you will come back to earth with me to see your family again. Even if your mother and father are worlds apart, at least they are no longer fighting as they once were. Hope held Jane tighter. I am ready to come back to earth. Jane nodded. Yes, Hope. On our next trip back, we will search together for your father, seeing as you will be 16 years old and legally able to make your own decisions inside a family court. I shall be your appointed attorney as we have discussed several times. I must keep a close eye on Jane and Hope. What if there is a connection between Jane, Hope, and the missing children? Dark Sparrow thought. Hope loaded various martial arts weapons into six individual leather cases, all interwoven. Hope is coming with us to embrace diversity week at Amethyst University. Hope and I are doing a weapons demonstration along with my shadow clones. Hope is better than a ninja. Jane clicked her fingers as she moved her hand in a circular motion. Troy frowned. I have known you and your father for a long time, so why did no one tell me of this world? Do you base your video games on this world? I will explain everything soon. Let's put our minds together and unmask the cyborg. Jane extended her right hand forward. Everyone except for Dark Sparrow touched hands. Hope joined the party, waving farewell to Master Desmond as all ventured on. Approaching the stables to see large birds, raptors, and dragons, Hope instructed, I will ride my cassowary. Trinity will ride passenger behind Jane on her sapphire dragon. As for you two, I suggest an emerald dragon each. Do not worry, they are easier to ride than a horse. Dark Sparrow observed all the creatures, noticing differences between dragons. The emerald dragon was a quadruped with a long salamander's body. It had a tough bulb on its head and a double bulb at its tail's end. Topaz dragons looked more like praying mantises with their six limbs and six skinny wings. Amethyst dragons and sapphire dragons looked the same, the only difference being their color. Jane's sapphire dragon was saddled up wearing plate armor. Dark Sparrow noted that the sapphire dragon had a long brachiosaurus neck, a wide wingspan, thick hind legs, and long, razor-sharp claws. Your sapphire dragon is not blue. Why is that? Dark Sparrow asked curiously. A natural sapphire is a blue so dark that it looks black. Her name is Sapphire, which keeps communication simple for me. These dragons are in the large size category, 15 to 20 feet in length. Gnomes are tiny, 2 feet tall. The small category is reserved for certain breeds of dog that are 3 to 4 feet tall. Then they are those in the diminutive class, the size of a yapping chihuahua. Humans are medium, 5 to 7 feet in height. Huge is 20 to 40 feet, the size of a plebidactor. Gargantuan is 40 to 70 feet, the size of a mosasaurs, and colossal is 70 to 100 feet, the size of a blue whale. These size measurements keep categories simple for my father's video games and for missions, Jane explained enthusiastically. Plebidactor? What the hell is a plebidactor? Gasping for a breath, Jane continued speaking. Size categories help during missions to verify what we are dealing with. My dragon rider mentor Julie has a gargantuan sapphire dragon residing at Nine Mile Sapphire Beach. Julie will be there tonight showing off her knightly talents. Study her well, Hope. She fights well against the men. Yeah, I am looking forward to meeting Empress Julie. But stop getting distracted, Jane. The emerald dragons are saddled, so let's hurry up and get moving. Hope clapped his hands, ordering everyone to hurry up. Dark Sparrow and Troy Marino grimaced, commenting simultaneously, who the hell does this kid think he is? Taking one more look around the planet, Dark Sparrow thought, so far it reminds me of my mother's home in Cuba PD, South Australia, home of the opal fields. Too bad mother never struck at lucky mining. 
she used household products to create explosions, extending her underground home. Troy tapped Dark Sparrow's shoulder while pointing across Emerald, the land of peace. Dark Sparrow, I could easily make this place my home. Grabbing Troy's wrist and pointing his hand toward the ground, she responded, do you realize you point your finger too much? No time to waste. Let's go. The party of five ventured to Amethyst University led by a 16-year-old kid. Dark Sparrow thought, surprising to say, Hope was right, riding an emerald dragon was easier than riding a horse or even driving my Hummer. Time to investigate this Embrace Diversity Week. The title reminds me of a man who learned the hard way after thinking everyone could be best friends. How gullible was he?